Okay, so in this problem we have a 2D plane. Imagine this this yellow shape right here is a 2D plane, uh, like a perfectly flat shape of paper, or just think of it as a dimension with two dimensions or a flat plane. And it's crossing this three-dimensional shape right here. So this is a 3D shape. And in these types of problems, we want to analyze what happens when the 2D plane, however you orient it, is crossing your 3D shape, right? What What is the intersection going to look like? Well, here, I'm sorry about the drawing, and actually I'll, I'll show these in future videos with actual models. I'm just short on time right here, so I'm going to show this by drawing it. They'll usually have to shade in, in some way, the intersection, right? Where it intersects your shape that you're looking at. And here, I'm kind of making it really obvious by color, the way I'm coloring it, but here, this shape is a triangle. And you have to imagine that, right, this plane is crossing this 3D shape at an infinitely small slice. And if you cut it vertically, right, we're cutting down this way, you will get this triangle. And you can see on the bottom why that is, right? This one 2D plane cuts on one line on the bottom, and then precisely, right, along the edges here to form this triangular space. And if you, you know, if you had a similar kind of shape over here, but just cut it a little bit differently, I think you can see that you would actually be able to get other shapes. And that's that's part of the beauty of these kinds of problems. Depending on how you cut, you will get different shapes. It's a wonderful topic um, here. Okay. So now, right, if you cut differently, let's say you're cutting perpendicular to the shape or perpendicular to the other plane, right, but you're parallel to the base. When this is happening, you can imagine that this plane is parallel to this base down here, right? That can happen. You can have the flat base on the bottom to be parallel with the one on the top. It just means they're, they're never going to meet. In that case, you can kind of imagine that here, the intersection is going to just follow the exact same shape, right, that's on the bottom. This is always going to happen with prisms and pyramids, right? The idea is that I almost imagine if you were to take a, any kind of pyramid or cone or whatever and cut it halfway, you would get a miniature version of the entire shape, which means the base at the bottom, wherever you cut, will match the base, the original base. So here with this slice, you will get a slice that's actually equal right to the base and the bottom. And that will happen when your cutting plane is parallel to the base on your shape. So here, this shape, by the way, I should name it, is a pyramid. And this shape on the bottom has six sides. So you can refer to this as a hexagon. Right, hexagonal pyramid. We name pyramids and prisms by the right the shape at the face of um, the base. Right, this is the, the hexagonal hexagon is the base here, and together it's a pyramid. All right, hope this shed some light on this on this um, process, and we'll do some actual models to help you really visualize this pretty soon. Thank you.